Oh no, big flounder. Hell yeah. What is up, my dog's lost in here. Just finished feeding the uh, young ham here. We're about to get out the door, go see if we can catch some fish today. I'm feeling like trying to bring something home, so maybe we'll go look for redfish, flounder, trout, snapper, anything that's good in the cooler and good in the pan, and we'll do a little bit of a catch, clean, and cook today. We are gonna go put him down, say bye to the dogs, <laughs> and uh, go drop the boat in, go get in the water, and go catch some fish. All right, all right, let's get started here. Got a salt native, Skelly shrimp head on here. I love this freaking bait. We're gonna see if we can find some red or snook or maybe some trout. There's a snook. Oh no, big flounder. Hell yeah. Nice. Oh, let's see if we can get him in. Let's see if we can get him in. Right out from the log. His buddy might be coming home. Go for the flip on the flounder. Hell yes. Now we're talking. Man, I am so stoked about that one. Beautiful, beautiful flounder. 18 inches, so he's legal size. He will be going in the cooler and coming home. The cicadas are ripping. We set out today to uh, catch something to bring home, and that is one of my favorite fish of all time to eat. So I am stoked on this flounder right here. 18 inches, gonna be beautiful. Got a nice mark. Whew, man, you have no idea how stoked I am about that. The flounder has been released into the cooler, and we are moving on. It's so great to kind of have that goal to come out, and I was really hoping for a redfish, maybe, but honestly, I think flounder are, the tastiest fish in the sea right next to triple tail probably so we're gonna keep moving maybe we'll catch a redfish too and just have an absolute feast there's a very beautiful little hawksbill sea turtle right here what a cutie see that guy gosh the water is ice clear man that is so cool i mean to catch a flounder out of water like this is also like well damn that's sick oh really as I'm saying that, I doubt they'll eat, but there's two big fat sheep's head right here. I'll tell you what, I definitely blew this, but there's like 40 sheep's heads sitting on this log here. here. That flounder, I don't know if I mentioned this already, fell to the uh, salt native skelly shrimp in the prawn color. This is like my go-to clear water color right here. Gosh, he slapped it. Hopefully, we can connect with like a red or a snook or anything. Okay. Oh, I just freaking dropped the fish right there. I was not ready for that. Oh. I think that's probably a snapper, but. There's a little snook. That's cool. Just as we're saying, we'd like to catch some snook. We're in it, baby. Ooh, and another one followed them out, a bigger one. Dang, son. All right, and they're gone. Oh, like three of them followed them out. That's always really cool when you. See him come flying out of there. As you were, sir, snook are obviously not on the menu because one, they're not in season. Two, that thing's tiny. Three, snook might be one of the few fish I don't know if I can ever bring myself to keep anymore. I just love those things so much. Just pulled off onto a beautiful beach. I wanna let you know that today's video is made possible by Catch Cove. You know what Catch Cove is? They are a lure making company that makes some awesome baits. They help design all of the salt native stuff or I got to help design all the salt native stuff with them. And uh, they make some great paddle tails, shrimps, all that type of stuff. If you're a bass guy, they have an a numberable amount of bass lures. They have a ton of salt water lures that I got to help create too. So I'll leave a link down below where you can go pick those up. What we're catching our fish on today, that big fat flounder was caught on a bait made by Keshka. So go hit the link down below and pick you up some baits. Oh, redfish right here. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I got too close. Are you kidding me? I've been looking for that redfish the whole time. 
I was sitting there screwing around with a damn barracuda and a redfish just rolled up right on top of me. Ah. This is like looking at this stupid barracuda trying to piss him off. That is literally what I've been looking for this whole freaking time. Oh, that is... That is brutal. <laughs> Well, I think it's time for us to roll. We have a big storm pushing onto us over there and uh, got a little bit of an idle back to the ramp. Today was awesome. We're gonna head home and cook up a meal for myself and my wife. Just feels awesome, man, to be able to bring a fish home and uh, cook it up for the family. So we'll catch you guys at the house. I got absolutely poured on the way home, but all was good. When filleting a fish, it's always a great idea to start with a sharp fillet knife. We're just simply filleting this flounder, then we're going to remove the skin, make sure just to let the knife do the work as it slides the skin right off. Then we split each filet so there's four pieces. Keep it simple, throw some salt, throw some pepper on it, then we're going to wrap it up and stick it in the fridge while we prepare the other ingredients. Here is a list of what you'll be needing. If you want, you can pause it and see what you need. Start off by dicing some bacon and getting it crispin in the pan. While the bacon's crisping, wash off your knife. We're gonna fine chop two cloves of garlic, half an onion, some fresh parsley, and I end up throwing in a green onion as well, but that's totally, totally optional. This is what's gonna build up all that flavor in this dish. And here's all of our beautiful ingredients laid out nicely and prepared. We're gonna start boiling the pasta water Throw some salt in there. It'll kick up the flavor, just makes it quite nice. While the water boils, add two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of olive oil to a skillet over medium low heat. Then add the garlic, the onion, the green onion into that pan and we're gonna pinch some red pepper flakes on top and then make sure that's coated really well in that oil and butter. Back to the pasta water, throw in some oil and it's time to drop in the linguine. We're gonna cook this to an al dente, so it's only gonna be in there for about nine to 10 minutes. Now, once the onions are looking slightly transparent, it's time for the flounder fillets to go in the pan. I cooked them for about four minutes on each side, but it really depends on the thickness of your fillet, so you kinda need to eyeball it. You just wanna make sure it's delicate, but you've formed a nice crust on the outside of your fish. Once it's all cooked, Set the fillets aside, and it's going to be time to create your sauce. We're going to add a quarter cup of dry white wine to the pan that the flounder was cooked in. Then we're going to use a wooden spatula to scrape the fond off the pan, and then we're going to start squeezing some lemon juice, and uh, make sure you drop your lemon in the pan on accident. It really just adds some more flavor to it. Then you're going to finish your sauce off with two tablespoons of butter, and two more tablespoons of olive oil. I decided to strain my sauce, which I think made me lose some flavor, but it's a personal choice whether you like chunks of onion. I know my wife doesn't, so that's why I strained it. So once you got your beautiful sauce, it's time to add the linguine to it and toss it around. Once that's coated a little bit, we're gonna add in the crispy bacon, that fresh parsley, and it's really gonna start just bringing depth to this dish. Then, plate up your linguine, and we're gonna place that delicate flounder filet right on top. This is gonna get topped with a bit of torn parsley, maybe a pinch of capers if you like them, and then we're gonna make it gently rain with some pecorino or romano cheese, but really any type of parmesan or that type of thing would work well. And there you have it, flounder linguine. Are you ready for the presentation of it? That looks good. That looks delicious. Baby. Hey guys. I'm sorry. It's not for you. Did This was without a doubt the best seafood dish that I have ever personally cooked and maybe one of the best I've had in a long time. I was so stoked to catch a flounder and it's really got me fired up to do some more catch and cooks and videos like this. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it because I sure did.